Reality.tv. Welcome back to the Australian Beach Ultimate Championships in Coolangatta. I am Oakley Ryan and I am joined by Max Stanstrom. We'll be commentating here for you to sit today. Uh, the teams we are watching right now is the Extinction Archaeopteryx versus Scott Perry's team. Uh, Max, tell me, uh, tell me what you can see right now. So we've seen Scott Perry's team jump out to a quick one nothing lead, making great use of their tall timber as they look again to Scott Perry himself, the eponymous, the titular, the deliverer. That's 2-0. They'll be looking for that all game long. They play big boy ultimate out there. They love to throw the long ball. And when you've got receivers like Hamilton and Anderson and Perry and De Hollander, you can't blame them with height like that. Oh, exactly. Uh, as we said before on that first point, uh, just before the stream started, you can't teach height. And uh, it seems that that's going to really punish uh, the Archaeopteryx team here today because uh, the Scott Perry, uh, the Townsville boys there, are uh, bloody tall. Yeah, it's an interesting challenge, I guess, for a team like Archaeopteryx. They don't have a clear, uh, good matchup on those big, tall guys. Chris Carr is probably their big that they'd be looked to get be getting on some of those tall men. But um, I guess the challenge is when they can put two or three guys on the line that are six foot one, six foot two, six foot three plus. It's pretty difficult. Yeah, exactly. How are you going to shut that down? That will be the challenge today. As the pool is being fielded there by Bridget Bursinghouse. Finds Annie Gordon on the far sideline. On the far sideline now and he puts nice floaty flick up to Chris Carr. Down the line to Annie Gordon again. She has Kai Stark free in the end zone. Doesn't put it. Dumps it back to Carr. Pushes it back towards the center of the field. They're just playing a, a simple match defense. Nothing too fancy from Scott Perry's team so far. Really forcing that far sideline, trying not to let them get anything around. Alex Sims with the disc right on the far sideline now. Floats it up. Through the hands of DePerna. Can it be regathered? Annie Gordon! Annie Gordon with the layout goal. What a recovery. Puts Extinction on the board now. Great effort from DePerna, getting fingertips to it, getting the deflection. You would have thought for all money that she'd got the D, but Annie Gordon makes the play. Annie Gordon, amazing up and coming player up here in Brisbane. Can you believe she's only 16, Max? Very bright future ahead of her. Uh, I know she's already on the radar of some of the Australian uh, youth coaches. I know that she attended one of their camps late last year. She's being looked at as a, a bright star for the future, definitely one to watch. And you can she, see why with plays like that. She certainly is. She played on the uh, Queensland under-22s mixed team last year. Um, phenomenal player. Just can't wait to see what she's going to be doing in the future because at, at the ripe, ripe age of 16, uh, she, can, she has great things ahead of her. Down on the other end, you can see what we were talking about. It's the height of Scott Perry's team. It's Scott Perry and Tom Anderson there. Uh, just just towering over the other girls on the line. It's a, it's a great combination that Scott Perry's team have. It's real kind of fire and ice, chalk and cheese kind of stuff. The big, tall timber of their men and then the agile, fast-cutting, hard-working women. As you see, they shoot deep to Agatha de Hollander, and then she'll flip quickly to Perry for the goal. They made that look so easy there, Max. Very clinical, very quick. Yeah, both de Hollander and Perry able to get plenty of metres clear of their defenders going deep, and then a beautiful throw to open up that space. It seems like Rob de Hollander managed to get all the tight genes in his family. <laughs> didn't, didn't leave many for Agatha, but getting the job done with their pace. It'll be interesting to see how Extinction can uh, change up their game, try and shut down those big boys, uh, maybe have to try and push them under towards the disc instead of uh, giving, them, giving them the space deep. 
as we're speaking, the wind's coming right to left and a little bit away from the camera. It's probably worth considering some uh, alternative defensive looks, I'd imagine, from Extinction. We'd love to see a bit of zone, perhaps, or a, or a poachy defense that, as you say, pushes their players out of their natural comfort zones, you know, gets those tall guys going back under and makes them uh, work the unders or look for their women going deep instead. Brick pulled there from, uh, from Scott Perry's team. I think that's Bridget Bursinghouse going to be bringing in the disc. Archaeopteryx opting for that 2-3 stack. It's very common around the fields at Beach Nationals this year. Seems like the preferred go-to offense. It really gives the, uh, the players downfield a bit more space and allows uh, someone to be isolated in the center of the field. Disc is back with Bursting House, finds El Kid, looks off the deep option, sets it back to Bursting House, to pass it on the far side, back to Bursting House. She's really doing a lot of work there through that point of the field. Oh, sorry, that's Megan Barnes, my apologies. Finds Rachel Royal there to pass it in again, puts it up and over, big float. And El Kid was in, yes? Is it con That's confirmed? That's a goal. Yes, goal. El Kid must have just been towing the line there, it seems. It was a lovely fat side forehand across the field. All the play had been running up that backhand side, that downwind side, and they were able to tack back against the momentum of all the defenders, go fat side with the forehand. And Alan the Kid Kid in acres of space. Good vision there from Alexi Parsonen to see El Kid cutting to that side of the field and then put the leading throw up to him. And that takes it to 3 2. Scott Perry, Scott Perry's team, Scott Perry and team. Scott Perry and friends are currently up. <laughs> and they're uh, opting for the upside down pull. The, the uh, upside down hammer pull there from Chris Carr. <laughs> Unconventional, but it lands in, which is better than plenty of others we've seen so far. Bit of a zone look here from Extinction, maybe. No, they're just a bit of a poachy, poachy man look, it seems. I, th I think it is that zone. I think it's a 2-2-1 two, two, with Carr deep, and they shoot long. Oh. And Carr's almost there and puts putting plenty of pressure on, but Perry, cool as ice, and just waits for it, watches it into the hands, past the fingertips of Carr. Seems as though that defense worked a bit better for Extinction there. They are... They were able to slow down some of that quick movement and whilst uh, Scott Perry's team still wanted the deep shot, it was hotly contested there. Um, so if they can tighten up that zone look, uh, hopefully we'll be seeing some Ds coming off that later in the game. From a coaching perspective, I think you've got to be happy with that adjustment, as you say. It forced a shot into a, to a, contested, to a contested opportunity. Um, and you'd back yourself to do that again and get the block next time and get the turnover next time. As you say, maybe tweak it slightly, tighten it up and close down that gap from three inches to just enough to get a touch on the disc and get the D. I like the adaptability though. Big arcing backhand sails just outside the far side. I think that's the second brick pull now from Jack Sibley. Does a couple of punishment push-ups on the yeah. field. Oh no, that's not from Sibley. That's Artega. <laughs> Always a good time for chest day. <laughs> Tire himself out before he starts running. Yeah, but he's got to look good on the stream. I think. <laughs> he's got to look good on the stream. That's what it's all about. Gordon with the disc now. Finds Villas on the far sideline. To pass and in now. Resets himself. Flick break. Now to Sims. Oh, nice leading backhand through. Just a bit too much caught with the wind there and Parsonen couldn't quite get there to seal the deal. He seemed to just lose his footing a touch 
It's a tricky throw in this win to get that to sit out in front. Uh, so credit to him for the throw, but it was in the end just a touch too far. Yeah, the, the sand now is also starting to dry out from the rain we had this morning, so it's no longer uh, easier to run on. Uh, it's, it's making it harder to run on now as the sand dries up, so I think the players also need to start adjusting to that. As Scott Perry's team with the disc find Ortega on this near side. And he'll shoot deep, looking for De Hollander, but with the wind going right to left, that one had no sit on it at all and just continues to sail out the back. Scott Perry's team looking really nice and clinical with the disc, moving it quickly, high tempo offense. Not able to connect that time, but a good option nonetheless. Uh, Archaeology is going to pick up the disc. Uh, Alex Sims there, bringing it to the front of the end zone line. Extinction have a really deep horror stack set. Fine pass on the far sideline. And a foot and block foot by block. Ortega. <laughs> Clutch and Rob De Hollander will look to move it quickly. He picks up, flips to Ortega. And the scuba over the top for De Perna. But Might have been a call on the throw, it seems. Bit of a discussion there with Parson and Ortega. And they'll have a chat. I think saying he had a bit of a bump on his elbow. Did it affect the story? Did it affect the outcome, I guess, is the question. I think it all... Looks like the no call's call. retracted. No call. Calls retracted. So the turnover will stand and so Archaeopteryx with the disc. Sims brings the disc in again and the extinction stack still wasn't quite set. Oh, Gordon with a great hands there. Great grab. She looks. But overthrows. Cut out nicely by Bowden. Comes back near side to Sibley. DeHollander heading deep. Sibley looks for him. Villas in hot pursuit. Villas got the pace. DeHollander laying out a good couple of seconds after that one hit the ground. Got to look good for the stream, Max. Yeah, I think he remembered the camera was on him. <laughs> Villas bringing in the disc now on the close sideline, giving themselves the whole field to work with. Fine Sims. Very stagnant offense. There's not really much happening. Sims now fighting to find someone. Finds Gordon to pass it in. Oh, and it just nicks the fingers and hits the sand. To Hollander will pick back up. Fakes the high release forehand, but instead opts for the backhand. And it's through the hands of Bowden, unfortunately. To Hollander, he's been a threat with the disc and downfield. But this time, he's not able to hit his target. It's been a bit of a long point here, Max, and I think you can see it in their legs now that everyone's legs are a little bit tired. Those cuts just aren't quite as sharp as they should be. I think that's oh. true of everyone except for Gordon. Gordon. She's nailing those undercuts. Villas now, big fake. Finds Sims again. He puts the big one up. Looks like there's a call. Everyone's stopping and watching, but no. It was simple exhaustion that led to everyone <laughs> just watching just that one. Couldn't career quite the get game. there. Artega will bring it back in. I think both teams need some uh, some sharp, good cuts to just try and seal this point in, give themselves a break. De Hollander looking to get this point finished. Throws to Artega. Huge layoff! Oh, up. that Does was amazing! On? Is he in? No, he's not. Oh. He takes it back. Too casual. Too nonchalant. He needed more chalant. Just a little bit of a flick over the shoulder. It didn't didn't quite get there. Villas with no mark to Sims. He's got Parson and Long with the big hammer. Can he get there? Oh, another layout attempt. That bid. He had the misread on that shot, and Parson and still went for it. Both teams putting their bodies on the line. Desperation stuff. <laughs> Trying to finish this point. Bowden will shoot deep to De Hollander. That's the kind of throw you want to throw to De Hollander. 
float it up, put it on top of him. Don't make him run. Let him do what he does best. Be tall. Out in front. Sibley chases that one down. And they'll get that point, finally. I think everyone on the field there uh, just just happy that that's over. See some people collapsing on the sidelines here. That was a long point and their legs must be hurting. They ended up adjusting, figuring out what needed to be done, which is instead of throwing it out in front of their receivers, just pop it on top of them. It's so difficult on sand to accelerate quickly and get up to your top speed. So you've got to really adjust your throws from what would be a good throw on grass is definitely not a good throw on sand. Extinction Archaeopteryx have to be happy with that, though they forced some turnovers there from Scott Perry's team and made them take some questionable options. Uh, which hopefully now they can continue to do that, it will definitely bring them back into this game a bit more. And that point, Archaeopteryx opted to have Villas on the Hollander. We were talking about how they were going to get matchups on that height. They opted for speed. Villas obviously very quick. He's played a lot of ultimate in his time. Key part of the QUT ultimate scene for a number of years. As we see another pull. Oh, that one That's landed in. That's a very in. nice pull from Hamilton. Lands right in the back of the end zone. Really going to make Archaeopteryx work hard to get it down there. Megan Barnes working hard through that offense, but it's just a turnover. Cheap turn on the doorstep. Hamilton will pick up and look to get it done quickly. Goes to Perry in the near corner. And there's a pick call by... Chris Carr. By Carr. New rules with pick call. We remember that you have two seconds uh, after the pick occurred to call it to see if it actually affects. Little dishy there to Jazz Lee. Too easy. Archaeopteryx just can't give up the disc that cheaply on such a short field because you know Scott Perry's team will be ruthless with it. They don't yeah. need to be given multiple invitations to score from a two-meter turnover. That's exactly right, Max. Archaeopteryx uh, worked well to get the disc moved moved uh, to the front of the, to the front of the end zone uh, from that big pull from uh, Luke Hamilton, uh, but then just just couldn't quite execute uh, their dumps properly and and then uh, had the, the little drop just outside just outside the end zone there, and they got punished for it. Currently playing with three women on the field, I think. We are playing with the gender rule that means that it's two points of three women, then two points of three men alternating the whole game long. As Anderson pulls, big outside in backhand, that'll go well out the sideline. That's yeah. well onto the other field. He'll be doing some push-ups for that, I think. To quote that great band, it's just another brick in the wall. They definitely had enough of them today. A lot of teams struggling to get the pools in field. This win seems to be playing havoc with even uh, with even some of the most experienced of players, which just shows um, how unpredictable it has been uh, throughout the morning thus far. This being brought in at the brick mark by Amelia Yap. Annie Gordon again with another great undercut. The sand makes no difference on her speed, it seems. Disc goes up. Oh, good job there. Caught for a goal for extinction by Rachel Royal. It's a beautiful throw. Just sat perfectly out in front for Royal to clap catch two-handed. But I just want to talk about Gordon a little bit more. Everyone else looks fatigued. Everyone else looks off their pace. And she's still cutting at 105%, accelerating to top speed and just providing endless undercuts for this Archaeopteryx team. So often being the initiator, getting their offensive flow moving. She plays so well through that same position. She makes running on sand look easy. Uh, it, make, it seems to not affect her speed at all. She's able to, even, even if her defender tries 
tries to stand under of her. She still seems to be getting open under free of them, uh, which I think is a credit to her, her speed, her persistence, and how she's playing this game. Yeah, speaking of that, it was interesting that point. At the start, she set up her defender, I believe it was Lee, was sitting two or three metres under. And, you know, conventional wisdom would say, take what you're given, go deep. But Gordon knew what she wanted and just powered through, used her pace and got the under. It's pretty impressive when you can just decide what you want and take it, almost regardless of what the defence is doing. As Villas pulls, another brick out that same sideline. And De Hollander will bring it in. Number of times he's been looking to throw an initial under and then head to the end zone himself, cutting deep out of that handler space. Ortega instead opts to Perry. Doesn't have a lot downfield. He'll shoot to Ortega. Might be a pit call. Everyone else's statues as, it <laughs> as Ortega celebrates the goal. Celebrates the goal and then just jogs it back as, uh, as he had miles of space down there. Yeah, for a moment there, he left the rest of them looking like garden gnomes, but we'll come back. To Perner at the front of stack. Stack's relatively deep, but we know how much Scott Perry's team loves to jack it, so that might be a conscious choice. Will they, do th will they run the same play now? <laughs> yes, apparently. <laughs> and they and do. <laughs> successful despite probably not the prettiest throw. I take out in front to Chang. Depurna's underneath it. Two hands. Goes up strong. Making that look very easy they did there. Although I'd say that second throw wasn't as clinical as the first one. No, I imagine out of the hand he wasn't stoked with how that one flew. But I take out, read it well, chopped, came back under and was able to secure it. Uh, we've just hit half time there. Half time occurred at seven. Teams have opted not to take a break, and so we're just mirroring half now. We've talked about how fatiguing running on sand can be. I'm sure they're hoping just to close this one out quickly and hopefully give themselves a bit of a lunch break after this one. Trying to figure out if it's three males or three females now on the field. I think I think it's been sorted at three females. No, three males, I think it is. It's a bit of a contrast in styles, these two teams. Arcteryx uh, looking to use and taking full advantage of all their players, uh, men and women on the field. Whereas Scott Perry's team maybe a bit more of a male-dominated team. A lot of hucking from big boys thrown deep to other big boys. They definitely do seem to be playing predominantly through their males. Um, their females are doing a great job at shutting, at trying to shut down the females on the Archaeopteryx team though, which just then makes uh, the extinction uh, offense a bit harder. Yeah, credit to them. Great defense so far. Shutting down, I'd say every woman except for Annie Gordon, Annie Gordon <laughs> who's nigh on unguardable on sand. It turns out she goes super saiyan when she's on the beach. <laughs> uh, uh, and De Hollander looks for De Hollander. I don't think it counts as a honey pass when it's brother to sister, but not able to hold on. She just mistimed the jump, maybe went up a touch early, ended up only getting fingertips on it as it sailed over her head. Our kid had a great closing speed there. Disc, uh, when the disc went up, he was probably in line, in line with the throw uh, and managed to get there just as the, just as the D was occurring. It's definitely one of the quicker players on this field as he goes under, Hamilton in pursuit. Definitely has the wingspan advantage, Hamilton does. But oh, tries to find off. Gordon, but just a bit of an errant throw. Sibley looks out in front. For De Hollander, but well out in front. Much too far. Car, <laughs> Jack Sibley goes down again for a couple more. I do appreciate the commitment to chest day. It's very important. Though I do have to say, other than Rob De Hollander on this team, it looks like a lot of their team has been skipping chest day. <laughs> I'd have to agree with you there, Max. Annie Gordon again found the under, but just with the overthrow. And they'll run and gun, moving quickly. De Hollander looks deep for Hamilton, floats it to the tall timber. He'll catch it on his knees. And that's another one for Scott Perry's team. They extend the lead. It's 8-3. 
Archaeopteryx just haven't found a, a good response to that deep game that Archaeopteryx has been opting for. The big boys, it's difficult to mark them. It's difficult to mark them, uh, not only because of their height, but because it means that you know their strides on the sand are obviously much bigger than yours. And for, if you have to take every two steps for every one, well, you're just going to be out of luck, I think, there, Max. Simple numbers game, really. Extension will have another opportunity. And there's still plenty more ultimate to be played this afternoon and tomorrow before we get into the elimination bracket. So this by no means uh, is the end of the road for them. They're a very solid team from a, a well-established club. Um, from up here, they're locals. Disc is fielded by Sims to Yap. Finds Royal on the outstretch. She moves it back to Yap. He finds Villas on this close sideline as Big to Hollander closes in. Back to Sims in the middle. He puts it up. It's a lovely throw. Oh, not quite. It was a beautiful throw, beautiful float. Just slightly misread. Slightly misread there by Gabby Hagen. And De Hollander will restart play. It feels like he's played almost every point. Definitely the a leader on this team. He'll go underneath to his sister. And now she'll go to Chang. To Perry on this near side. Content to work the unders now. Perry wanted the deep for De Hollander. But great Seemed job as if the, uh, the secondary camera was in the way there. Goes the hammer. Villas was right up in his grill. But... And that one will go to turf. Picked up by Sims. Villa sponsor, but Perry's right on his tail. Finds Yap in the middle. That would have been a high stall count there. Everyone's legs seem to be a bit tired at the moment. To Hagen. Finds Royal. Oh, and Scott Perry just with the D there on Villas. Emphatically smacked down and rubbed a hole and wastes no time. Throws the big high release backhand. Perry, easy as you like, gathers that one in. Another tough point there, Max. There was a couple of turns from both teams and just went back and forth for a while, which you can see really took its toll as everyone's slowly, slowly making their way off the field now with their very, very tired legs. And that's 9-3. We've still got some time left in this game and having watched the previous one where we saw Frisbee watch come back from 7-2 down you've got to believe that anything's possible but at this point it's highly improbable I'd say definitely improbable but also possible we have seen it happen before um, Archaeopteryx just probably needing to change things up a little bit to try and sort out their offense and their defense a bit more uh, they just seem to be struggling again with uh, with those big boys and they just can't seem to shut them down. We haven't seen them try that zone look again and I think that's a little bit disappointing. I think while it didn't get them a turn or a stop last time we saw it, we did see Carr make a good bid and it ended up being a contested catch that Perry took. And I think... You want to commit to that for a couple more points at least. Give, give your team an opportunity to settle into it uh, and really tighten it up. But they've opted to go back to match since then. And that's another brick. That's another brick pull. Someone might be taking another, another couple of push-ups for that, working out their chest day. Uh, Corey Wakefield will be bringing in the disc for extinction. Stack setting pretty deep. Giving lots of space underneath. Gordon again on the open under, but she's not used this time. Sugarman to Barnes, puts it up, just overthrown for our kid there. Kid did have a couple of meters, uh, but the throw curled over, turned over the top and out of his reach. And Ortega will reinitiate the Scott Perry offense. He's played a big role for them in this handler position. 
He moves the disc well for them, gets some flow happening. Finds Lee. Gordon on the mark, dumps to Ortega. Ortega will shoot deep. He's got Sibley underneath it. El Kid reads it well. Dumps to Barnes. Back to El Kid. Oh, just overthrows it there, Sugarman. And now Ortega. They're about 12 metres out. Will he look to get it done in one? He does. Backhand over the top. De Perna's there. But it looks like we've got a call. There's been an injury call on the mark. Oh, maybe a bit of a, the follow-through from Ortega caught. Ah, uh, caught him in the face, perhaps. No. It might have, looks like it might have been an ankle injury. As as Corey hops off the field. We hope he's all right. As Chris Carr will come to replace him. I don't imagine it'll bring that throw back. Uh, I think that's what they've agreed on. Yep, the disc is staying. Going to be picked up now by Barnes. As Extinction set their offense up. El Kid presents an option, doesn't want it, goes back again. Chris Carr to Kid. Gordon gives a nice breakside cut, but so does everyone else. And Kid goes long, dumps to Carr. Big throw up to Kid. Is he going to get there? Does he hold on? Does he tow it in? Does That's he a have goal. it? Yes, he does. Alan the Kid, Kid. What a machine. I think that's definitely what uh, Archaeopteryx needed, uh, just to lift their spirits a bit, try and put them back in this game, give them something to look forward to, put a smile on their face. As we get another look at it on the replay, that's a great effort by Alan Kidd, you got to say. He's another young up-and-comer on this team. I'm not sure exactly how old he is, but he's definitely in that youth bracket as well. Blistering pace to spare. El Kid, ripe old age of 19. Definitely going to be showing uh, some of the older boys in Brisbane a thing or two in, a, in the years coming. Yeah, making a play that any vet would be proud of. It's shows some serious heads up, combined with some absolute top-level athleticism to make the catch while also being aware of where the sideline is and keeping your toes in is not an easy thing to do. And he just makes it look regulation. The question is, is that a momentum shift or is that, you know, a, a, a parting shot as they go down in a blaze yeah, of glory? Yeah, I'd like to see that zone again from Extinction uh, d try and slow down the Scott Perry's team's momentum a bit. But it looks like they're sticking to man here. Hollander, full field hammer, I like it. Hamilton. They make it look so easy, Max. Yeah, Rob De Hollander has been plying his trade for a number of years with uh, the Mammoth team in Brisbane, the men's team, and he's also recently played at the World Championships for the under-24 division with the mixed team, the Blue Bottles, where he brought home um, some, some glory for his country, but unfortunately no silverware. And you can see all that practice has paid off when you're throwing pinpoint hammers the length of the field. Scott Perry's team looking very comfortable out there on the field. Uh, looking to, looks like they're looking to close out these points very quickly. Wanting to get the game over. Don't want to stay out there longer than they have to. The sun's certainly coming out and picking up, so the heat's also picking up now as well. The Hollander just staying on the field. He's got a job to do. And Villas picks up to Carr. Back to Villas. Just not many options. There seems to be a bit of poachy D being played. Carr pointing where he wants people to be to be running to. Finds Royal on the far sideline. Villas hits deep, dumps back to Carr. 
back around to Villas. They really seem to be anchoring the offense here. Back to Carr again. To Hagen. She pops it up. Oh, but... Great Villas. layup here. A little bit unnecessary considering Villas had already turned and was going the other direction. Villas waving his hands up in the air. Not sure if there's a call or not. That was some of the nicest looking offense we've seen from Arche Archaeopteryx this entire game, to be honest, though. I definitely agree. They had good flow. They were able to find options. They were moving the disc quickly. I guess it would just be finding out finding out what, what the call is and what's happened here. <laughs> call, uh, discussion is still happening. Luke Hamilton looking very comfortable over there in the end zone. Just having a little bit of a lay down. Still not sure what's happening at the moment. We don't know what the call is. It seems to be a turnover. It's a turnover. And Hamilton will restart back to De Holland. He's got Perry going deep and no surprises there. Still choosing to play through their men as they huck it to Perry. And why not when he's that tall? Nigh on unguardable when you float him on top of him like that. It's a lovely throw. And in the end, finding Agatha to Hollander wide open in the front of the end zone. They make it look so easy uh, just to bring the disc back down the field. They put up a big throw. Big boy runs it down. They're a little, they're a little dishy or a little, little pass to, uh, to someone in the end zone to score. And that takes it to 11-4 to Scott Perry's team. All right, serious question, Oakley. Yes. Singlets versus uh, T-shirts when a, you're on the beach. What do you think? I'm a singlets fan all round. Suns um, out, guns out. Kind suns of out, thing. guns out, kind of thing. Exactly. I can't. I don't like playing with uh, any form of sleeve. Um, personally, what's what's your preference, Max? Look, I'm just gonna just to be different. I'll say T-shirt. <laughs> you know, sun safety. Sun safety. You're There's going to sleeve. There's nothing healthy about a tan, Oakley. <laughs> we all know this. I want to set a good example. That's car with the disc. <laughs> Back to Barnes. S oh, S Gordon on the outstretch, but just overthrown for her and couldn't quite get there. That's going to hurt Archaeopteryx. Oh, Villas, well read. Villas, well read. Great D. He's going for the end zone, he, but fakes back the under. Gordon's going deep. Doesn't he want wants it. a dump. He wants a dump. Finds Barnes on the dump. She's looking at her options. Finds Sugarman on the far sideline. She's looking at options. Dumps to Carr. He puts it up. There is no one there. I uh, don't know if he anticipated a cut to be happening or not, but it didn't happen. Look, you can't blame him. He was throwing a lot of space, but just there was no one in that space. As Ortega will throw, it's got Chang underneath it, who does lay out valiant effort, but nowhere near the frisbee. It's Archaeopteryx now slowly, slowly walk back up to the disc, set their offense back up. Looks like they're going to have Gordon uh, in that center position. She's been killing it through there, so don't fix what ain't broken, I say. And we should be right up on time cap now. I don't think we've heard the hooter yet, but it's due any moment. Oh, disc read very well, deed by Chang there. The O-line have another chance with Ortega. Looks off to Perna. 
Now he goes to her. She goes to Bowden, but it's a touch too far. Now picked up by Meg Munns again. She absolutely punts it. And there is just too much pepper on that one for Villas to get to. They find Deperna on the near side. She's got Bowden downfield, but Bowden's not providing much. Goes back to Ortega. Ortega goes to Bowden, but he's gone too far again. Looks like both teams are trying to get these points closed out really quickly and just making some, uh, some small errors, um, really punting them long and just, I guess, trusting their receivers are going to get there, but it's just a bit too much for, for both teams. Some hasty decisions, perhaps, driving those turnovers. It's tough as a receiver like Bowden when you've had a couple of throws be put out too far in front. Barnes puts up the big disc. Oh, Chris Carr underneath it gets a hand on it. And Seems as if there's a foul being called. Carr, definitely the taller of the two. You would have backed him going in. Seems uh, as if it's an uncontested foul. And Carr gets the disc. Gordon puts the afterburners on and just zooms to the end zone. Villas... Scores the goal, though. Definitely what Archaeopteryx needed to put them back in this game. Score is now 11-5 to Scott Perry's team. They'll be looking to uh, to score the last couple of points now. Or score the last point now to, uh, to finish this game. Game to 12. So the Hooter did go during that point uh, while the disc was in the air. So as you say, it is the game to 12. If Scott Perry's team can put this in, that will close out this one. Scott Perry's team also coming out on offense, which are, which could just be a very fast, quick point if they can play clinical O here. What's about we see a huck from to Hollander to Anderson, I think that is. Uh, that's Perry. Uh, Perry, apologies. I stand by the prediction, though. I think it's a fair prediction. I think it's... And it looks like it. it's on. The huck goes up. Perry's underneath it. And he can't get that bit of contact between <laughs> Kid and Perry. Instantly uncontested. He knows a foul when he sees one. Our kid should have taken him out for dinner there first. Definitely, definitely gave him a bit more than what he bargained for. About eight metres out. Game on the line. Inside forehand. It's going to sit. It's going to float. Jazz but Lee with the goal. Straight into the hands of Jazz Lee. That's the goal. And that's the game. Scott Perry's team run away with that one. Run away with it. 12-5. Yep. Well fought from Archaeopteryx. They just couldn't shut down uh, the, tall, the tall boys. The deep game of Scott Perry's team really proved decisive that game. They just had no response for it. They didn't have the height. They didn't have the, the defensive ability to match up with those big boys. And in the end, they ran away with it, despite the best efforts of players like Gordon and Villas to churn and burn underneath. It was no match for the big boys. So don't go anywhere. There's still plenty more action here from the Australian Beach Ultimate Championships. On the Gold Coast, I've been Max Tenstrom. I've been joined by Oakley Ryan. We will see you next time. See you next time, guys. Alti.tv.